Anthem Blue Cross and Common Threads are helping schools across the country learn about healthier food preparation. And here in L.A., they're joined by the Sparks and will provide education, recipes, and knowledge to students and families about healthier options. Learn more at anthem.com slash CA slash Sparks. Anthem Blue Cross is the trade name of Blue Cross of California. Trying to find your happiness this winter? Let Fiji Airways fly you there direct. Whether you're sunbathing or snorkeling, dining or dreaming, you'll experience legendary Fijian hospitality. Expect the warmest of welcomes in this specific paradise. Unplug, unwind, and relax in your happy place. Fiji. Get great deals on direct flights to happiness at FijiAirways.com. That's FijiAirways.com. You deserve this. Go from here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. Hey, it's Jim Chapman reminding you that if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in only one place. It makes it easy, folks. So do me a favor, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Webster's Dictionary defines productive as having the quality or power to produce at an especially high level. My guest today exemplifies this. In addition to building her law firm right here in Livingston Parish, she served on two boards, is a longtime member and past president of Rotary, and you even found an extra hour in the day in the not-so-distant past to run for state representative. Today, we're going to talk about her business how she spends time away from her business and her involvement with her community. So with that, welcome Ivy Graham. To Thank Local you, Leaders. Jim. So glad to be here today. We are glad you are here. We are glad you had extra coffee. Yes, I'm glad I had extra <laughs> coffee too. <laughs> I did as well. So this could be a real scary show for the people listening and watching. It could be. It could be. So for the people that may not know you, the one or two or three in the parish, uh, I want to get a little bit of your background out of the way. Sure. Tell us where you were from, where you attended high school and college, and how you ended up in Livingston Parish. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, my parents are both from around the Lafayette area, and they met in college. And my dad got a job in Baton Rouge after he graduated and asked my mom to marry him and move to Baton Rouge with him. And she says, how far away is that from my mom? Yes, let's do that. Uh, and they're almost been married 50 years. Uh, but Baton Rouge was a little too big of a city for um, my rural group, uh, roots for parents. And so they found property in Ascension Parish, built a house there. And that's where my sister and I grew up. Um, went to Gonzal- Galvez uh, Elementary and Middle School, Santa Mall High School. And a gator, then, gator, all the way, all the way. Uh, still like gators too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, then off to LSU, uh, where I graduated with a bachelor in political science, minor in business. Then off to Southern for law school, and um, then opened up my practice shortly after graduation from there. Yeah. And uh, in end of high school, beginning of college, I worked for Demco as a summer helper, and then. As a customer service representative, so you weren't going up on the lights, and I wasn't. I've I've you asked, wanted to though. Bro. I've asked so many times, but Aaron is just <laughs> absolutely against it. He feels like I don't have enough skill to be able to climb up a pole. I don't know. I feel like he did it. I could do it. Yeah, I right. Mean, sure. Anything a guy does, a girl can do better. We all know. Yeah, that. that's that's the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I, and so that's where um, I met my husband, Aaron Graham, and he's from Walker. And people, uh, boys from Walker, don't leave. They inform you that's the greatest place in the world is Livingston Parish, and so you find yourself married and in Livingston Parish. Yeah. And Same story here, mm-hmm. except in reverse. Obviously, it was a girl that uh, married me, and uh, and. Pretty much told me the same thing. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not leaving. You gotta kind of come here. Our neighbors next door, exact same story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, well, that, and that's a that's a shout out to Livingston Parish. You know, you come here and you never leave, and you and, know it's uh, the greatest place on earth. That's right. That's right. So, 
you mentioned Aaron, um, which for those of you, if any of you have ever met Aaron, he is the nice, absolute nicest, most laid back guy you will ever meet in your life. And he is like the yin to your yang. Yes, I'd say that's fair. When you say opposites attract, I mean, I'm talking, you know, Ivy is very full of energy. She's all over the place. Um, And Aaron is kind of the, I would imagine the the balance there, the, you know, uh, and just a super nice guy uh um i've met him and you know during your campaign and uh and i could not believe i'm sitting there and i'm like you know you have this ball of energy right here and ivy graham and then uh and her husband is just like the the calm and and uh calculated guy that is super nice and and all of that so walker louisiana you ended up there that's That's good country out there. Now, you mentioned that you majored in political science in college. You went on to earn your law degree. Have you always wanted to be a lawyer? Uh, Yes and no. Um, It's kind of an interesting kind of uh, coming of age story, I guess. Uh, My father always teased that he had two daughters, and so one had to be in medicine and one had to be in law, so he had everything covered in his life (laughs) going forward. (laughs) Sounds like a smart man. Right, right. Um, My sister did try uh, medical stuff, and then after one semester of college, she realized that was not for her, Um, and so she followed his footsteps and went into the insurance business. But for me, um, it was always kind of a seed in the back of my head kind of thing. Um, But during school, in high school, I was uh, into journalism. I was on the school newspaper and that sort of thing. So I really thought I wanted to pursue that Um, first couple of semesters of college. There was a lot of foreign language requirements for journalism. And I was like, "Mm, I don't know if this is going to work out. (laughs) I'm not very good at languages at all. Yeah, I understand. Um, and and so then I, I was watching a lot of HGTV. And so I thought interior design sounded like a fantastic idea. How great would this be? Maybe I'll have a ship. Probably not. But uh, I don't know. So, who knows? Who knows? Um, but I couldn't get into design school, but I could get into law school. Mm. So and there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so off you were. Off I went. <laughs> So um, I think it was probably a much better fit for me overall in the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's worked out. It's worked There's out. There's no it's doubt about out. it. Of course, you have the law office of Ivy Graham, uh, and it, you specialize in in uh, in family law. So it's typical that lawyers specialize in something. You have lawyers out there uh, that are primarily um, personal injury attorneys. Maybe they do other things. You know, corporate lawyers that primarily they're business attorneys, but maybe they do other things. This is just what they kind of focus on, I guess you could call it. Why did you choose family law as your kind of focus at your firm? Well, when I opened up primarily, um, it was, you know, feast or famine. You take whatever comes in the door kind of situation. And I did get a lot of family cases. Um, I got a couple of criminal law cases and I realized very early on I was not going to be able to uh, defend criminals just wasn't a good fit for me. Uh, <laughs> right. And I still just really don't like going to visit people in jail. That's just not where I want to hang out. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Call me crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it, I did a lot of family law. It wasn't my primary focus. And then I got picked up by a firm and their primary focus was family law. So it was a pretty easy transition to going to doing probably 60 percent of my work was family law to doing 100 percent or nearly a hundred percent. And they also liked the fact that I had done other things so I could offer a few more services to the firm. Yeah. You had a little bit of experience in a lot of different things. Right. So they're like, wait, she's doing what now? You know, who's coming in for this? Wait, no, so what are we offering these? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's OK. Right. So when you got out of law school that you you worked for another firm before you opened your your firm and kind of got your feet wet, I guess, in the for lack of a better term, in in law and those sort of things. How hard was law school? How tough was that? Law school is difficult because you have one test. And that's it. So yeah. there, there's no, um, all your other, well, I can't say all other schools. I haven't been to every type of school, but throughout all your other scholastic efforts, you know, you have that first test and then you learn how this teacher tests and then how to prepare and you have multiple tests and it's an average of grades and that sort of thing. For law school, it's just one. 
So you don't really know what's coming. I mean, you have a, a general idea of what you learned in that class. Sure. Um, and they say that the professors don't know who's test it is because you're given numbers you don't have names but i suspect some of them did yeah um but it was that was difficult to just because i'm not a great test taker um so just to have one and you're done was was very stressful right and people and you know and it's a lot of reading i can imagine (laughs) yeah and you know to your point you mentioned great test takers so i have i have several friends i have a really good friend who is uh he's actually a phd microchemist uh this guy's unbelievably smart was a horrible standardized test taker got like i i don't know i he, I'm not going to say his name, but I'll put I think he got like a 23 on his ACT or something. And this is a guy that had a 4.0 in high, in high school. Um, but he would be the first to tell you for whatever reason, he just was not a standardized test taker. But you ask him anything in the field, especially in this field now, and he's probably the smartest guy in the room. So some people uh, are just not like that. Then you run into people that they, they uh, you know, they're they're great at tests. But you ask them something on the spot and it's like, well, what? <laughs> so, or a lot of those, it's OK, so how does this fit into my everyday life? And then they're like, well, wait, no, I just this is the answer to the test. Yeah. 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 It's A, B or C. Right. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about life? <laughs> yeah. So I, I get it um, now. So you went to work for this firm and worked there a little while. And at some point um, you must have decided, you know, I think I want to open up my own firm and do my own thing. And you chose Livingston Parish to do this. Uh, take me through that decision process. How did that come about? The decision to open up my own firm or the decision to come to Livingston Parish? Both. Bank? Okay, because there are two different reasons. I want to hear both. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the decision to open up my own office was unemployment. So uh, that'll do it. it it's, it's a great motivator. Yeah. <laughs> you start finding new resources. Um, it was um, 2009 and the market is in the tank. Um, and the firm I was with let all of their new associates go. Um, so, you know, just apply for jobs, apply for jobs, apply for jobs. Nobody's hiring because the market's not doing great. And uh, it was Aaron, actually. He's like, well, you're going to have to do something. So I guess you're hanging out a shingle. Yeah. And I was like, no, all they did in law school is say that was the worst thing you could possibly do. What are you talking about? And he's like, too bad. This is what you're doing. So. I'm surprised he didn't say either that or you go up a light pole and you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah. You'd have been like, OK. I know, that's fine. <laughs> Give me some hooks. Yeah. yeah. I can figure this out. That's it. Um, but the the choice for Livingston Parish was one of those aha moments of wait, I don't have to drive to Baton Rouge, I don't have to drive to Hammond, I don't have to drive an hour every day. I could just be in my backyard. And I was like, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. And uh, Demco at the time had the incubator program, um, and took full advantage of that. Uh, really. It was it was such a valuable opportunity to just because of your overhead costs are so low. So you really can try when you're not making any money in the beginning to survive. And I'm still very grateful for that opportunity. What so. Take us through. What is the inc- incubator burger? And for those that may not know. Sure. Well, I'm, I don't I actually don't know if it's still around because it was at the Demco office that flooded and is torn down. And what what they offered there was you could come in and use their uh, you could rent an office you could rent an office i think it was three hundred dollars a month and you wow. had a full i mean you didn't have a full service of everything but you, you know if you had clients come in they came into a nice lobby you just came out and got them or they'd go down the hall they'd find your office um they worked with or it's an organization that's still in Baton Rouge that's retired business folk people. Uh, that's a pretty good program. Who um, offer mentorships. So yeah. you could, you could, you know, they'd come in, help you write business plans or, or make sure. I know quite a few folks that they took a lot longer to open their businesses, but they are still very successful today that, that spent a lot of time with those uh, mentors to really build up their business problem, uh, business model and make sure that they're, 
cost analysis and they could be profitable when they were ready to open. So, wow, that's a great program. And, you know, most businesses fail uh, the first couple of years. So when you have a program like that and it, and those the overhead costs are low, it kind of enables you the ability to have a chance. And so that's a great program I was not familiar with. So shout out to Demco. Go, Demco. Great job. Um, so fantastic. You started out, you were doing that program and uh, went in on your own and you chose Livingston Parish because, you know, hey, who wants to drive in Baton Rouge every day? This is great. Mm-hmm. And, and I totally relate to that. Um, now, let me ask you, you so you focus on family law. That's what you do. That's your um, that's your expertise, I guess. Of course, you do other things. Let's talk about some of the other things uh, you do at the law offices of Ivy, Graham. Sure. sure. Um, I also do uh, succession work, uh, estate planning. Some I, I do special needs trusts for, and then uh, continuing tutorships for folks with special needs who, who have children with special needs. Um, I do wills and power of attorneys and that sort of thing. So the, the kind of joke with family law and succession work is I try to get them going and coming, you know. Yeah. So. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Successions are. As the holidays draw close, it's easy to find yourself understaffed with an increased workload. Rush Truck Centers can help you adapt to the busy schedule. Rush Truck Centers offers on-site technicians that come to your location and perform service at every level. They're highly skilled and can remain on the job as long as you need them with customized solutions that meet the needs of your business. Meet the demands of the season with Rush Truck Centers. Go to iHeartRush.com to learn more. Are very important. Um, I, unfortunately, I've had uh, a few situations, people close to me um, who who's, have had relatives or whatever that passed, passed and, and uh, the successions, if they're not in place, the wills, especially another thing that if they're not in place, nobody wants to think about death and they don't want to think about that final stage in life. But if you don't have these things straight, it can it can really cause a lot of chaos after you're already going through some things. The last thing you want is is uh, your kids fight never a will or you don't have successions in place and and everything, you know, things are are uh, going to the wrong people. Maybe maybe you have property that that is not, um, you know, assigned correctly or whatever to the right person. Um, so those are very important. Nobody wants to think about them, but those are services you offer. Yes. Yes. The, there's a lot of bad information out there about successions and the process once a person dies um, because they and there's a lot of bad information out there because people are making money off of it yeah. um and so if they can scare you into something because nothing sells better than fear if they can scare you into something then they'll get you to buy their widget and and there's this thought process that successions are scary and terrible and they should be avoided at all costs and whatever i have to do to make sure this doesn't happen that's what i need to do The succession process is literally a legal document that transfers assets from the deceased to the living because the government wants its taxes and you can't tax the dead. That's really all it is. What the succession process is difficult is if you haven't put if you haven't organized your information, then your family doesn't know what to go look for. And that's what's difficult. You've already lost a loved one and now you're tearing up their house trying to figure out what do I need to worry about and what's relevant and what's not. And that's what's complicated. Yeah, it really is. And everybody's under a lot of stress as it Mm -hmm. is. And that's that's why it's so very important that if if uh, if you have a need that you contact the law of Ivan Graham and she can she can really lead you in the right direction. And, uh, and uh, you know, she's great at what she does. So she can really get you uh, get you what you need on that area. Um, now you are running your practice. Everything's going, you know, great. And and um, you realize, wait a minute, I've got like an hour left in each day. And I think I'm I think I want to run for state representative now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, boy, did you pick a packed race to do that in? I did, I did. Apparently, God called a lot of people that year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Um, actually, there were five candidates in that in that race, and it was a very competitive race. As a matter of fact, four of those uh, five candidates split fifty five percent of that vote. 
and only 3% of the vote separated the those four people. Mm-hmm. So you talk about competitive and 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 a good uh a, a good sideboard of that considering we have an election coming up the uh uh, you know, we'll have a, a new president, hopefully, or not a new president, but we'll have a a president chosen uh, pretty pretty soon. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, and so in that respect, um, go out and vote because yes. this is a good example of where every vote counted, mm-hmm. and uh, and why voting is so important. When you have three percent separating four different people for a runoff seat, mm-hmm. that's a uh, that's that tells you right there. I mean, that's a couple hundred votes one way or the other. Now, I uh, I, I saw I saw you a lot during this election, yes, yes. and uh, you were going and going and going. Was was running for election as grueling as you thought it would be? Um, there were parts of it that were more grueling than I thought they would be, and then there was parts of it that I expected to be more grueling that weren't. Interesting. Um, a, a lot of the speaking engagements and and that sort of thing, and having a clear message and stuff. I had focused so much on that, and it's the lawyer in me. Every position or or, or statement I would make, I would argue the other side of it, and going like, "Well, this is what everybody's going to say." And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can so, see you doing that yeah. <laughs> in a room, <laughs> so, right? I'm like, okay, well, wait. If I say this, and they're going to say that, and and that didn't happen. So I spent a lot of time worrying about how my message was conveyed that that wasn't as necessary for me to spend my time there um, versus the physical demands of just having to be everywhere and 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 always on and just this this constant go 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 um, there was a really tiny part of me that was a little relieved when i lost because i slept for a week yeah. <laughs> it was exhausting so it, it, you know for me that was uh one of that was an opportunity for me to see kind of the inside of it. And what surprised me personally the most was, number one, the cost to run for a local election. I did not realize was as much as it is. Um, surprising. And, and, and you have, there is no favors you can do. All of it's got to be reported to the state. Um, all of it has to be accounted for. You have to spend every dollar you earn. Uh, so no and, paper bags with yeah, right. a million dollars in cash. <laughs> right. and, no, no, you have to. You have to account for all of that during the election. <laughs> <laughs> the ethics board is pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so you're right, and and you do you have to account for all that stuff. Um, it, it's it, it's very tough, and it's it, it's like I say, it surprised me the amount of money that something like that takes. You would think from a local level, I mean, it wouldn't be that expensive, but it it is, and it's a and lot of uh, reach even in a very small. Yeah, just the mailers, you know, where it shocked me how much it cost to mail out the little mailers that we all look at and we're like, what do you mean? Yeah, throw it away. Yeah. That was like 10 bucks. Frame it, keep it. Yeah, I know, trust me. Um, so from that respect, that surprised me. And also the grueling schedule that I saw you go through. And you look, this is someone that when you know Ivy, she is Full, totally full of energy. And so it, you almost couldn't tell it. You had to really kind of know her to know that she was tired. Um, but she never showed it. Uh, you had some really good platforms there with the gas tax, you know, was a big thing with you. Um, uh, and uh, and like I say, it's, you know, everybody go out and vote for any election because you never know when it how tight those things are going to be and how and it's very important. And every vote counts always. Always. Every vote counts. Now, you were trying to run a business, obviously, in the middle of this, too. Was that hard to balance? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> it was very difficult. Uh, um, I would meet with people, and they'd make the follow-up appointments, and like, oh, yeah, we discussed this, this, and this, and I'm, I have no memory of it. Now, it's all in my notes, so I'm like, okay, clearly we did talk about yeah. this. Like, so I'm I wrote like, it right, down. I wrote it down, so this definitely happened, and, and you know, I didn't, I, I stayed on top of everything, but yes, there was, there was just, at the end of the day, there was only so many brain cells left, and they were just, yeah, it was, it was pretty Quite an experience. I would it's imagine. quite an experience. Quite an experience. I would imagine. And, you know, when you run for governor in a couple of years, we'll. <laughs> just straight to governor. Just straight to governor. Yeah. It's just straight to just, governor. You know, ran one small local election. Next governor. Absolutely. <laughs> so, 
So the law office of Bobby Graham, we said this several times, <laughs> focuses on family law. And, you know, part of family law is obviously divorce. Um, COVID has hit marriage pretty hard. As a matter of fact, Ivy Graham, here are some stats. Ooh, on stats. That. I, like I come with stats. Excellent. See, I'm a preparer. I like this. Um, <laughs> there are 20, there, there's a 20% divorce rate of couples right now that have been married five months or less. Now, this is nationally, not Livingston Parish stats, but uh, five five months or less compared to just 11% in 2019. So essentially doubling the rate. Um, surprising to you? Um, I don't get as many uh, less than a year divorces. Um, so that particular number not ter- that is a little surprising uh what drives divorce that covid just 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 hit it, hit it right out of the park um is financial struggles and um um infidelity those were fun text messages to read all the infidelity people who couldn't get together during covid right <laughs> <laughs> people um and but but financial troubles and then um, you know, cro- close proximity and that sort of thing and, and health concerns and, I mean, all those things. Yeah. Just, and then uh, your kids, I mean, or stepchildren a lot of times and you have those added family members and then if you're quarantined and you, and you can't separate, that'll just drive up the fighting. Yeah. When did Tommy become such a brat? <laughs> Why can't you just go to school? Oh, you are in school on the computer. <laughs> well, and, and the interesting thing is, you know, you mentioned the the time frame's a little different with what you experience, but even even overall, just just take the time rate out of it. Um, thirty four percent higher than twenty nine. Thirty four percent. Wow, that that's a lot. Um, if if there was any sort of issue in the home, COVID just magnified it. Yeah, and you've got a lot of people. They're in close proximity. Um, maybe you're married to your wife, but maybe you're both busy. You both work. You're never around each other except for, you know, nine o'clock right, at social night. things or, yeah. How's yeah, I love you. Oh, yeah, you're great. And then, you know. The On the next- weekends, we always go to activities together. And, and now we're like, wait, we don't like the same TV shows? When did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you want to do? I mean. <laughs> you want to talk to me, huh? Who are yeah. you? I got the game on here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, I know it's a repeat because we can't have new games. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. So it, it it did not personally, and I, of course I'm not an expert, but it didn't surprise me that you would see that number jump just because people, you know, you're kind of figuring out who your spouse is at that point. Maybe some people, you know, they thought this person was different than what they, who they married. And, and, uh, and of course, stress, you know, stress from a lot of these people lost their job or they got laid off or uh, you know, and that causes money problems. Money problems cause stress in the home. Stress in the home causes you to want to leave your husband or your wife. And and so, uh, I was surprised with how quickly it happened. Yeah. Um, because I shut down my office because March, when all this was coming out, this was pretty scary. Um, you know, this whole everything was. being shut down. You know, I I didn't have a point of reference for this. I don't think I think the last time this happened was. 1918 so i don't think any living person really had a point of reference for we're gonna shut down the whole economy so it was very very scary um and i reopened my office may 1st and it was instant the phone just blowing up (laughs) and and i'm like i hate my husband (laughs) the governor said we still have two more weeks people yeah (laughs) i was gonna have a soft open apparently not uh so I was expecting it to be more of over the next year, you're going to see a lot more filings. You know, Uh, I I just the instantness of it was shocking. Yeah, it was like they figured it out real quick. Right. And it's like, okay, wait, I thought everybody was laid off, but now everybody's got enough money to move out and do all this. I'm like, okay, well, all right. Yes. Let's roll with it. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. So it it definitely changed some things with, with regard to marriage and, and, you know, I just have a few questions on that. So Louisiana is a community property state. Um, explain kind of what community property means. Community property means while you're married, everything he has is yours and everything she has is yours. It's all shared. So um, unless you specifically contract out of it. 
So if just the husband works, all of his income is equally hers. If just the wife works, all of her income is equally his. It's 50-50. And that's what drives everybody crazy when we have to divide it up is it doesn't matter what happened during the marriage. We divide everything in half. Doesn't matter if it's he worked for 40 years and has $500,000 in his 401k. She's getting 250000 period. Okay. And so in... in- in addition to that, if if a, a, a husband runs up a credit card debt, mm-hmm. the wife's responsible for wife's that. responsible half of it. Wow, awesome! Even if she you didn't know. know that he had a credit card. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So it's fifty fifty. It's just 50, 50. Now you mentioned contractual contractual. Is that a word? So you mentioned that the the contract word. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm assuming you're talking like a prenup. You can do a prenup, which is you opt out of community property before marriage. You can do a postnup, which is you opt out of community property during marriage. Uh, there are legal filings that have to occur. <laughs> I bet that to get would that go point. over like a lead balloon with most people. Uh, that one's generally done for specific financial reasons. Yeah. Um, and uh, th- we'll do them in association with maybe a planned bankruptcy or something like that. Yeah. Or if, uh, if a spouse has gambling issues. Oh, yeah, that's true. I hadn't so thought about it. It's that. not that I'm ready to, to divorce. It's just that we need to start protecting assets. Gotcha. Um. Or, you know, sometimes, yeah, it, is, it, it, it does lead to the divorce, but um, that's a different issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need you to sign this. <laughs> well, and, and is that pretty common here, prenups? Are they pretty pretty common? Or I mean, I know we're not Beverly Hills here. And- uh, that's, that's the misconception, is that I need to be Beverly Hills to have a prenup. Um, or I, I need to be Beverly Hills to have that conversation. And... I don't know if everyone needs or doesn't need a, a, a prenup, but it's it's a financial conversation you have with the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with that I think you should have. Agreed. So yeah, so it's well, it's really a contract of how we're going to manage our money while we're married. Right. Right. Very true. Um, yeah, because people will take that the wrong way and say, you're setting us up for failure already. And it's like, no, no, I'm doing that. Um, so believe it or not, Ivy Graham, there is something there's a such a thing called online divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Online <laughs> divorce. Now, obviously, this is not a good idea for any listeners that are considering getting an online divorce. Um, I'm not a divorce forms, attorney. Too. but Yeah. Yeah. And. I would imagine this is not the way you'd really want to go. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to selectquote.com. Selectquote.com. That's selectquote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at selectquote.com/commercials. It is Ryan here and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woo -er, a hand clapper, a high-fiver? I kind of like the high-five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino-style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses, so don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Most people screwed up. The issue... The issue is bigger uh, because the issue at the end of the day is, is, is financial. Um, if you hire an attorney to do your divorce, it's more expensive than what some folks in. We have a, a poor element to our community that that is underserved by the legal field. Um, so Access to Justice is a program put out by the Louisiana Bar Association, and, and their whole focus is to try to uh, provide legal services or provide avenues for legal services for those um, less fortunate in the community. And yeah. so there is a push by them to make forms available so that people can get divorces and that sort of thing. Um, but 
they don't get them right a lot of times. And so then they are end up spending all of the cost to hire an attorney or to figure out how to get it fixed. So it's a double edged sword. I don't I don't have the solution on how you serve the underprivileged and um, make sure it's done in a cost effective way. Um, but that that's the reason for a lot of the forms that you'll find on court websites. You can go to any website and find something. That's probably not a good idea. Um, <clears throat> and the other big issue is people just simply being afraid. They are afraid that attorneys are going to cost too much money. They are afraid to go talk to an attorney. And so I found a form online. I don't have to talk to anybody, so I'll just use this. Yeah, and I, and I would imagine judges, if you don't have everything filled out, Correctly, it's thrown out. I mean, they're they're not even going to look they at can't, it. Well, they can't give you legal advice, so they're not going to say, "Well, here's what you did wrong with this form." So that's why it's kicked out. They're just kicking it out. Right. So that's why it's so important that, and you know, there's there's even online sites that aren't even real that do this. So they'll take your money and they'll send you a bogus form, and and you don't find out until you go file it with the court. So uh, so definitely get some representation right uh when i first opened my practice um and wasn't necessarily the very first person or anything but in those first couple of years i had a gentleman come in and he had already spent twelve hundred dollars trying to get his divorce and he comes to me he's like i don't know i don't know what to do anymore this or that and i was like oh well you just need to do this this and this form got it fixed for him for 500 bucks and if he had just come to me from the get-go it'd have been, been cheaper yeah so what's the waiting period for a divorce like, like from the time you separate, what is typically? Um, so, so Louisiana is a no fault state. So everybody's like, oh, I just need that cheap no fault divorce. We're all no fault divorces because they decided. It's that. never my fault. No, it's never my fault. <laughs> uh, the court system decided that, well, I guess technically legislators because they changed the law, that we were tired of hearing that he said, she said, rigmarole, and it's just, it's all no fault. You just have to wait a period of time. Now, you can get a fault divorce for adultery, domestic abuse, um, those sort of things. Uh, felony conviction. Um, so you can get fault divorces for that. But everybody, all your regular folks are just going to get a uh, no-fault divorce, which if you have no minor children, you have to live separate and apart for six months. And if you have minor children, you have to live separate and apart for one year. Interesting. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean you have to wait a year to file, but that's your time periods. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So... You've dealt with a lot of these. Are all of them messy, or do you ever get people that come in your office and they actually get along? They just realize that maybe they don't love each other anymore, or maybe they want to move their separate ways. Yes. They aren't getting along, but they can be civil. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not always necessarily yeah. the same thing. You probably but, see both sides of that yes, <laughs> you yes. Know, um, equation. Yes. They, uh, yes, there's some that are just emotional and broken and hurt. And then you've got some that have just drifted apart, drifted apart and it's like, just let's be done. And then you have the other middle of the road, which is, I don't want to fight, but I don't want to be with you, but I don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just tell me what I have to do. <laughs> now I don't see you anymore. <laughs> well, and, and that's what made, to me, that's one of the things that made you such an interesting candidate for office was the fact that you were used to negotiating with, you know, you have to bring these, you have to bring in some cases, I'm sure, two people that can't stand each other to a table and say, okay, we've got to figure out resolution here, you know, because we're getting nowhere with, with both y'all throwing and, you know, axes at each other right. or whatever they're right. doing. Um, so that, to me, was a, a, a big part of you in, 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 in a political arena was the fact that you were used to taking two parties who totally disagree <laughs> and getting them to agree. And that's, a, that's an innate quality. So that's something that not everybody can do. Um, certain innate qualities in life, I believe, that is one of them. Um, what is the first thing you should do when you uh, consider a divorce? Um, talk to a lawyer. Um, exactly what I put down. <laughs> consult an attorney. I was like, what is the first thing you should do? <laughs> uh, because while many situations are similar, uh, a lot of the initial advice is very customized to this particular person's situation you know um 
Do you take money out of the bank account? Do you not take money out of the bank account? Do you move in with your mama? Do you get an apartment? Do you, um, does, do you, um, get that, that extra job? Do you not? I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go into just how do you live a new life with, out somebody that you've been depending on in right. some capacity or another. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's a, a major that, change. Yeah, a lot of that advice is, is very um, specific to whatever a person's situation is and stuff. Yeah, I can imagine. And and does it really matter who files first? I hear that a lot. That everyone thinks it matters on if someone abandoned the house. It does not matter. Abandonment's not a thing anymore. Uh, and uh, the filing first is only relevant if there's something dangerous going on and like a domestic violence or child abuse situation. And sometimes in those situations, filing first can matter. Uh, But 99% of the time, no, it doesn't matter who files first. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so we're, (laughs) you have a new location coming up soon. I hope to. Um, or, or you're looking for a new building. You're, you're working, working on, on it. it. Um, is it going to be still, you're obviously still in Livingston Parish? I'm still in Livingston Parish. Since the flood, I've been in Livingston, uh, the town of. Um, and shout out to Lester McLenn and McLenn Taylor and Associates. If anybody needs some survey work, please check them out. Um, because they have been very kind to me uh, since the flood and letting me use their facilities. Uh, but yes, it is it is time to come back to bat to Denham Springs, and so I am. I've got a building under contract, and fingers crossed, we will be able to close, and I will be able to come back to Denham Springs. Awesome! So I can flood with everybody else next time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> come with us. <laughs> uh, well, that's fantastic. Um, and we look forward to get, hear more about that when you get that. Uh, when you get that good to go, I'll blast it all over social Absolutely. media. Um, I want to discuss something we can else. Do a little caption of all the people who helped us make this possible. Yes, exactly. I would love that. Um, so I want to discuss uh, uh, something that's been in the news lately, and that is we have an, a new Supreme Court justice, Amy Coney Barrett, mm-hmm. who is um, amazing. Yes. If it, <laughs> she makes me look stupid, yes. <laughs> we'll I was, that far, that but, one was way too smart. I mean, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. <laughs> totally good way. In a good way. She, um, I watched, you know, I'm kind of a, a, a geek when it comes to, to Supreme, to any sort of hearing. I don't know what it is with me and hearings, but I love watching uh, congressional hearings. And of course, they had her confirmation uh, uh, hearings last week, a week before. It was amazing to me watching this woman who is from Metairie. And this is why I bring this up. She's she's a hometown girl. I mean, she's she's right there in Metairie. She's South Louisiana all the way. And um, a Catholic and unbelievable as far as uh, brains. Yes. You know, you have someone that basically was getting pretty much attacked in a lot of ways from a lot of people. And unflappable, mm-hmm. just uh, had every answer. And I was thinking, you know, I don't care whether you're a Republican or Democrat, uh, undecided. Right. If this woman doesn't get confirmed, it's a travesty. Um, she was really that qualified. Mm-hmm. Uh, very impressed with her. Yes, I couldn't believe someone that qualified was living in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, and you know we want to keep obviously we like to make people jokes. here. Yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so it what you know what blew my mind, Ivy, and I said, you know, I'm a deep thinker. Believe it or not, I th- I think very deeply, mm-hmm. and so I'm watching all this, and I'm thinking, you know, here we are, and the, and she's not the first woman to be a Supreme Court justice, but mm-hmm. she is the most rare. Recent. Um, it wasn't too long ago women couldn't even vote. And now they're sitting on the Supreme Court. Um, wow, we've come a long way in a short amount of time. That makes me proud. I was watching some of the, the hearings. I didn't watch all of them in great detail or anything. But oh, I did. The... I can fill you in. <laughs> good, good. Uh, but it did bother me just the... Or because if I missed it, if I missed it, please correct me. But the dismissal of Sandra Day O'Connor, mm. um, and it was just Ruth Ginsburg and how Miss um, Bennett is going to be the next greatest thing, which and, and she will. But it's like 
Sandra Day was the first, and she was a conservative, you know, and she was... uh, and then Ruth was that balance to that. Um, they they both came from very different backgrounds, and so it, it shaped their political views. And, and so does Amy. Yeah. So uh, I think it's relevant for everyone. But that was that was the only thing that really bothered me. It was like everybody wants to keep forgetting Sandra Day, and it just she was she was one of my idols. Yeah. Um, so she- from a legal perspective perspective and yeah. from women's rights too to um i mean she went from her her story and ruth ginsburg's story is very similar in the sense that uh nobody would hire them they were the you know the token women in their law clubs um they both ended up having to work for their husbands for a period of time work for out pay because nobody was going to hire a woman um and then to to go from that to being on the supreme court of the united states it's just it's unbelievable i mean I mean, you know, to think about this is like our, happened in our generation pretty much. You, you know, it's from women, people that are growing up now, these, I guess, 13 to 20 year olds, they don't realize that it wasn't too long it ago. Wasn't. Women were not respected in those roles. Mm-hmm. Um, they had roles and that was in the kitchen and all those sorts of male chauvinistic things. Um, I think it's amazing. That's the part of democ- or America that that to me I, I I love so much is you will not find that in almost anywhere else in the world um, where you can go from that to this mm-hmm. that fast and not cause you know civil war right. or something like that. So uh, there's a great uh, display um, at the uh, old state capitol for uh, women's movement and and the right to vote and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the suffragists and all that kind of, and there was, I hadn't read, I've read a lot about the suffrage movement and that sort of thing and the leaders and how they got there and everything, but I hadn't actually read a lot about the counter argument on why women shouldn't have been given the right to vote. I don't know. I just hadn't had a lot of that material in front of me, yeah. but they had some of those there. And so I spent a lot of time reading that. And the one of the ones I liked the most was it was like 12 things that if we give the women the right to vote, this is what's going to happen. And one of them was they'll get elected to public office. (laughs) Uh, They'll want to go to work. Um, They won't want to have babies. They uh, will make laws that men have to follow. And could a man take orders from a woman? <laughs> um, and I think one of them was they would be judges and they could be judges and then they would decide a man's fate. Um, and it was funny because every single thing on there ended up becoming uh, true to some extent. Not that women don't want to have babies, but, you know, that that has changed over time as well oh, for sure. a variety of reasons. But yeah, um, and I just... It was funny because it was true. It really <laughs> and, and, is. and it wasn't the end of the world <laughs> that women made laws that men had to follow. Well, and that was the point at the, at the time that that was written. You know, it was like, you don't want this. No. <laughs> They're going to start like making laws. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more babies. No more babies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, that it's, it's just blows my mind how far this country has come from that point. And the, in these, these, Women like Sandra Day O'Connor, those are people that um, that really need to be in the forefront of everybody's mind that they change those things and and made them better. So uh, kudos and congratulations to our new, newest Absolutely. Supreme Court justice. Very proud that this lady is from South Louisiana and super smart. It, her and John Kennedy went after it on it uh, in a good way. He was, you know, doing his question. And he's so funny when he does this stuff. You know, oh, let me take, let me think. Here. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's just he's a, he's hilarious. But he his you know, what a lot of people don't realize he's a extremely smart individual this guy is highly educated i think he's a Rhodes scholar or um maybe McHugh's off screen but where where did he get a i know you know is it a, a Rhodes scholar yes okay yeah, he went to oxford in oxford yeah so he's he's major brain power and um and so him and her it was like watching superman and and uh batman or something like that go at it or batwoman is there one of those Anyway, <laughs> so they go at it and he's asking her things that obviously he knew the answer to, but he was wanting everybody to hear how knowledgeable this woman was. She was spitting out precedents that I was like, 
How did she know that? I mean, hundreds of them. You know, well, there was a precedent back in 1917, and she would go through the whole and thing. Quote, specific yes. quotes out of it and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even remember all the code article numbers, and she's got exact quotes memorized. I can't like, even wow. remember my grocery list. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this one was saying precedents for 1917. Just blew my mind. So um, so awesome for her, and, and uh, she is not a without sponsor. Without her notes, too. <laughs> yeah, without her notes, mm-hmm. and that's impressive. Um, so we're going to talk about you now. <laughs> Get back to you, Avi. Uh, so you give back a lot, and that's one of the most impressive things about you. You, uh, you are obviously busy with your law firm, but yet you find time to serve your community. And um, you're very active. You serve on several boards, including TARC, and you're on the Library Board of Directors. Um, And you've been a longtime member of Rotary. So I want to discuss a little bit about a few of those. Let's talk about TARC. What what does TARC do? Who are they? TARC is a nonprofit organization in Hammond, or Tangibaho, but they do service... um, they do have clients in Livingston, um, and they provide services for disabled children and their families and disabled adults. Um, and they also have a uh, baby program for um, preemies. So it's it's uh, part of the program is if you can work with preemies early enough, they will be caught back up by age two or three and be on the same um, if 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 part of their early birth is giving them any sort of delays. I see. Okay, so are these mental disabilities or are these physical? Mental, physical, um, all of the above. I got gotcha. you. So. And I have I, I actually uh, for Leadership Livingston, I did uh, uh, our small group. We worked with LAC, which is in Walker, the mm-hmm. Louisiana mm-hmm. Activity Center, uh, and for Challenge Adults, and and uh, has been um, has been a you know, kind of a changing experience for me. So uh, those things. It's so great. They've been able to get a new facility. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful little building over there uh, in Walker. So you also do a little bit with uh, the library. You're on their board? Yes, I'm on the library like board. like to read books, do you, Ivy Yes, Graham? yes. Well, Didn't get enough of that in law school? I did, actually. Like, <laughs> that was the funny thing. People would always ask you, oh, you must you must like to read. I'm like, no, I'm so sick of reading. <laughs> what do you read for fun? Nothing. Nothing. Ever. <laughs> no. Uh, it took, actually, quite a few years after law school to kind of pick up reading leisurely again, just simply because it was like, I don't, I can't do this. Yeah, I can imagine um, all this stuff. But yes, yes, um, I do. I, I use Hoopla, which is their online you can download books online and stuff and uh, i read my books and um i've attended some of their programs um it's great to be on the library board just to give back uh because giovanni is uh is the director and he just does such an outstanding job he makes our job as the board members super easy um he he and i mean he's he won a library director of the year last year year before um, awesome. I did not know that. That's um, great. Massive shout out for uh, what his efforts were during the flood and that sort of thing. And efforts that he put in place was actually mimicked by other libraries across the state. Um, so, yeah, they use those as, as examples. And I'll tell you what, if you go in, you know, I went and early voted um, right here in Denham. Love that. Yes. Love it. Yes. Love it. And so excited the library system has been able to do that. Yeah, it's great. But here's the thing. Okay, so I'm used to going in the front of the library, right? Mm-hmm. And and let me tell you, <laughs> you go in the back and, you you know, of course, my wife has to tell me, okay, you got to drive to the back. You don't go to the front. And I'm like, I know this already. They got signs with there. No, no, you drive to the back. I know where I'm going. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I go, to the, I go to the back as instructed and, uh, and go in the library and... It is like awesome back there. There is a whole new part to that library. Probably most people don't ever see unless they go to like vote because it's back there too. But this guy has in and, and the board, you know, obviously with their support has done so much to beautify. We have a really nice library, um, in my opinion. So kudos to you and to Giovanni uh, for for uh, all your accolades that Ivy just mentioned and also the look of that library. It's just a beautiful facility. Now, you're past president of Rotary. You've done a lot for Rotary, haven't you? 
I, I mean, I, I don't know if I've done a lot. I mean, for they everybody. call you the Rotary Girl <laughs> behind they your do, back. They do. They do. I, I have heard that. They're like, it's your club. I'm like, it's not. It's, it's not like the Rotary Club of Ivy. Like, <laughs> the Rotary not. Club of Ivy. <laughs> now with, lo- with all the Ivy <laughs> right. things coming yeah, off no, of it. No, That'd be no. cool. Too much. So you do a lot with that. What is what is Rotary? What is what are they? Uh, Rotary is an international uh, service organization um, whose main focus right now is trying to eradicate polio from the planet. Um, but they it's just do charitable work and and good deeds across the planet and, and make everybody better. Awesome. Awesome. So provide you, opportunities. Yeah. And, and my point to all that is, is, uh, you know, you're you're very unselfish person to do those things. And I think that leaders, people who who possess, you know, leadership qualities, you don't just look at their successes in their business, but you look at what they do to give back for their successes. Those things are are as important as uh, as their success inside their business. So I, you've done a great job with that. You're a very unselfish person. I think that's great. Um, now, my favorite part of this whole thing is the fun facts. Okay. Love that. Okay. So when I was preparing for this, I went through and I'm like, fun facts on wall. Look, I could have done a whole show. <laughs> You know, it opens. What I like about it is it opens my eyes to what y'all do and interesting little things. And I'm like, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Why didn't I know that? So I found tons of fun facts and I, I shortened them, <laughs> obviously. And uh, so we're going to cover a few. And, and some of these you'll probably, uh, you probably knew. Some of these might surprise you. But um, McHugh, this is his favorite part. I um, can tell. He's riveted. Yeah. He's. <laughs> He's, he's got bated breath over here. So. Okay, so. What will they be? <laughs> yeah, what are they? Get to them. Uh, there are currently 1.34 million lawyers in the country. And are they based, all still licensed? <laughs> that's, now, that's another question. But based on our population, that means there's one lawyer for every 234 people in the United States. Okay. Found that interesting. Don't know. You know, I think that's great. Um, did not know that. Uh, in 1986. Stephen Bacchus became the youngest person to ever graduate from law school. He was a prodigy, kind of like the Doogie Howser of law school for those old people like me who know what Doogie Howser was, who he was. How old do you think he was? Youngest person ever? Yep. Graduated from the U of Miami Law School. 23? Hugh, you want to take a shot at that? Is this like Price is Right rule? Yeah, I mean, you're not going to lose anything. We're not betting money. Just say a number, Mickey. 17. Close. 16. Dude was 16 and graduated from law school. Pretty smart guy. Interesting thing is he could not take the bar. Why? Because... He the, couldn't vote yet? He had to be 18. He had to be 21 to take the bar. According to New York. Now, this was... He was... He, it had something to do with New York, and he was wanting to take the bar in New York, and a federal judge ruled he had to be 21. I think that's kind of weird. I think, hey, man, if you're 16, you can, you know, you're a prodigy like that. Take it. Why not? It, It'd be kind of weird to have a 16 year old represent me. I would say <laughs> that it, it would it would not necessarily be knowledge based, but uh, life experience based. Yeah, and, and that the, would the, be the issue. The money element of it. So just because you can brief a whole bunch of cases and understand the law doesn't necessarily because uh, we we have to manage client money. So yeah, um, you see, that's a good point. You know, does how, how does his bank back. account look? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't <laughs> Fine, read this case for the win. six seasons. <laughs> We have to take a character and fitness test to make sure that we uh, meet all these requirements or good ethical people. So, And you know what? That's that You bring up a good point, though, and that is life experience. And those are things that uh, you can have all the brains in the world, such as Stephen Bacchus. Tell him to go to med school after Yeah, this, I mean, you know? have you ever been in love, Stephen? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Have you ever been in love? How are you going to understand a divorce if you haven't even <laughs> kissed a girl, Stephen? Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> You're too smart. <laughs> yeah, so I get it. Makes sense. So, the area with the most lawyers per capita, Washington, D.C., does oh. not surprise me a bit. But the reason for that is not what you're thinking. What is it? The reason for that, that it's not, it's maybe, it's a per capita or licenses? It, well, uh, per capita is what it says, but it might be licenses. I'm because not if, you, not. if you get your, uh, if you get a Washington, D.C. license, it's transferable in, in other states. Okay. So if I get a license from Washington, D.C., then I can practice in like five other states. Gotcha. So a lot of people will get that so that they can. 
Well, and that's a good question that I did not ask you. You practice only in Louisiana? Yes, I'm only licensed in the state of Louisiana. So, But anywhere um, in Louisiana. Yes, anywhere in the state of Louisiana. Um, but I cannot handle your Mississippi case, your Florida case, your Alabama case, your Texas case, your Washington, D.C. case. Your Alaska case. Your Alaska case. <laughs> Let's go through all 50. <laughs> uh, the divorce rate on the first marriage, 41%. Okay. Sound about right? Yeah. Because after that... Um, That's almost half, Ivy Graham. Yeah, but I would imagine... I bet you the divorce rate on the second one's lower, but then after that, they probably like all average out. Yeah. Yeah. The average length of time prior to divorce of the first marriage, how, how long would you say? Repeat the question. The average length of time prior to a divorce of a first marriage. So seven. How, you say seven. Okay, y'all are both close. Eight. Yeah. Used to be seven. Used to be the seven year itch. I think is it's what it's just the, it's just the layover that, but it's yeah. It's the eight year itch now. <laughs> so I'm way beyond eight years. I'm at twenty one. So I'm good. <laughs> I made it. We made it, baby. It, but that, those are the saddest ones. Those 22 to 40 years of marriage, those are the sadder divorces. Yeah. yeah. 40 years, I ain't leaving nobody. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's like, uh, wow. So, Mardi Gras, uh, here's some fun facts directly related to Louisiana law, not necessarily okay. divorces. Mardi Gras beads are not allowed to be thrown from higher than a two-story building. That's by law. There's a law. So if you're on a three-story building, you can Is it two stories because of the French Quarter? Yes. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. So snoring is prohibited by law unless all the windows are closed in your house. <laughs> that is on the books. So interesting there. If you order a pizza for an unsuspecting friend, carries a $500 fine, and I will totally... Issue that fine. I would report anyone that does that. But interesting, weird thing on the books. Biting someone. Well, I would say that that one might be different, too, because now you have to prepay. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't... If you just keep sending free food to my house, I don't know what the holdup is. But before, when you had to pay on delivery, oh, that yeah. would have been a different scenario. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's true. They need to adjust that one. <laughs> Biting someone is considered simple assault, Ivy Graham. However, if you bite someone with false teeth, it's aggravated assault. Okay. <laughs> Why that is, I have no, I don't know if the false teeth are considered a weapon at that point. I don't know. You'll have to look into that, Ivy. But licking's okay. Yeah, but what? Licking. You is can it bite. really? No. Just... Oh. <laughs> look, nothing surprises me anymore, Ivy G. <laughs> Well, so those are some interesting laws that people did not realize were on the books. And I have enjoyed having you on this well, show. Thank you. I enjoy this as well. Now, it's always a good time to talk to Jim. Always a good time to talk to Jim. Now, tell all these folks where they can find you on the web if they want, if they, you know, want to get a divorce <laughs> or want a succession or, or any of those will, sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, the website is www.ivygramlaw.com. And it's I V Y G R A H A M L A W. Uh, the office number is 225 663 8959. There you go. So look her up successions, wills, power of attorneys, all those sorts of things. I have a couple gifts here for you. Presents? Of course. Yes. What? Yes. So it's still Breast yes, Cancer it Awareness is. Month. Yes, so I have is. an awesome Feral Calhoun. Pink breast yes. cancer awareness. It's a limited edition, obviously. I, this is pretty impressive. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and then you know it won't be in a couple of days, so I've got the local leader's official you podcast. Gotta be ready shirt. for my November you have to outfit. Do that. I like and that's, it. I also have one for. Well, I've got several for you. <laughs> I've got Good. one for Aaron and one for you. That's I like why it. I had two. Yeah, his and hers. And of course, a Chapman Spank Place nice. podcast. Tumblr. Awesome. Well, and this is what you should be bag. having the water in. You're right. 
You're right. Yeah, because they're not yeah. sponsored. Murphy USA yeah. is not a Isn't sponsor. Isn't that guy around right there? I'm telling you. There you go. That's like thank you, thank uh, accidental you. sponsorship. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. McHugh David, I'd like to thank you, sir, for engineering this podcast. Again, my guest, Ivy Graham of the Law Office of Ivy Graham, the Livingston Parish News for the Space, and all you viewers and listeners, for your support, please follow me on all my social media and spread the word. I would like to thank my sponsors for this show as well. I could not do this without all of you. If you're interested in sponsoring Local Leaders, the podcast, or appearing on my podcast, please reach out by emailing me at jim at paintpodcast.com. Until next time, I am Jim Chapman reminding you to love your community, support local business, and keep leading. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club! Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, only prohibited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.